Hello, in this tutorial we're going to show you how Cut2D automatically converts DXF designs and drawings into CNC toolpaths. We're going to import a, a CAD file, a DXF file of this wing spar. We're going to show you how to use the drawing tools to scale and position this in the material. Then we're going to go to the toolpaths page in the software and calculate profile toolpaths and pocketing toolpaths and preview the results. So if we start by closing this file, so file close, create a new file, specify the size of the material. Here we're going to use a piece of material that's 8, inch, eight inches by 2 inches by an eighth of an inch thick. Z0 for setting the cutter will be on the material surface. We're going to specify the X0, Y0 origin to be in the middle of the material, so in the middle of the material. We could work in metric if we wish, but in this example we're going to work in inches. Click the OK button. The white area represents our 8 by 2 inch piece of material, and the crosshairs in the middle represent that X0, Y0 is in the middle of the material. Next we're going to import the DXF file. So here we can import a DXF file. We can also import EPS. AI, PDF files, also files from the other Vectric uh, software products. So if we open the DXF file, you'll see that the DXF comes into the software in the position it was drawn. This was originally drawn in AutoCAD. We want the wing spar to be in the middle of the material, so we can click on the center in material icon and the, the geometry automatically moves to the middle of the material. Alternatively, we could just press the F9 key and the geometry will move to the middle of the material. There are a number of other tools inside the software. We can draw shapes, so we can draw circles, ovals, rectangles. We can also add text. We can also move objects, so if we say move, we can move by a relative distance or an absolute distance. We can also scale things. So we can scale, so if we wanted the geometry to be exactly 7 inches, it will scale the X and Y accordingly. We can also click twice, so if we click and drag to select the geometry, you notice we get the white handles. If we click on a handle and drag, we can scale the, the size interactively. So we can scale it up or down. We can also move the geometry around close the form, put this back in the center of our design. We also have the option to go backwards and forwards with edit, undo and redo. So edit, undo, we'll keep moving back or moving forward. There are also tools for rotating, mirroring the design, also fixing the design. So for example, if this design was made of separate line or arc segments, the software will automatically join them to make continuous paths for toolpaths. We can also join independent vectors or shapes, so we can close them and join them together. And we can also align objects or vectors relative to other objects in a design. Once the design is the correct size, we can then swap from the drawing tab, which is on the left hand side of the interface, click on the switch to the toolpath tab on the right hand side of the interface. Check the material settings. So material Z0 is going to be on the surface of the material. The material is an eighth of an inch thick. The clearance gap, this is the height above the material that the cutter can move at rapid feed rate. Let's make this 0.1 of an inch. And some machines have a home position that the cutter can be returned to after cutting. So you want it to go to X0, Y0 and half an inch above the material. Click OK. Next we're going to create a pocketing toolpath for the three holes in the middle. So click and drag the left hand mouse button to highlight or select the holes. Click the third icon along to create a pocketing toolpath. Specify the depth that we wish to cut to. So here we're going 
through the material, so an eighth of an inch thick. Select the cutter that we wish to use. We can use any size cutter. We can also add new cutters, copy existing cutters, delete them from the database. Here we're going to use an eighth of an inch end mill. Specify the maximum depth that the, cu the cutter can cut in one go. So here if we say it can cut 63 thousandths and we're going an eighth of an inch deep, it will give us two passes on the pocket. Specify the step, step over distance uh, relative to the, as a percentage of the diameter. Set up the speed, spindle speed and the feed rates for the material that you're cutting. So soft materials you can run it very quickly, hard materials you need to slow the feed rates down. Click OK to select the cutter and calculate. The software automatically opens the 3D view. We can click with the left mouse button and rotate. We automatically go into preview mode, say preview the toolpath. So this shows the cutter as it will machine the, the material. So there we have the three pockets. Next we wish to cut the shape out. So to do this we return to the 2D view. So click on the top left hand corner, select the outer profile, select the second icon which is create a profile toolpath. Again, select the cutter that we wish to use. Again, we'll use the eighth inch end mill. We're going to cut an eighth of an inch deep through the material. We're going to profile around the outside of the selected shape. We could go around the inside or machine on the line, but we'll go around the outside and click calculate. There we have the profile toolpath going around the outside. Preview this toolpath. This is showing the cutter running around the, around the material. Two passes. We can now delete the waste material. So delete waste material. And that leaves us with our finished wing spar. When we're happy with this, we can then save the toolpath. So save toolpath. Select the post processor that we wish to use. So for example, if we're running, um, let's say for example, we use the, the Mac control software. So we'll use the Mac Arcs inch post processor, save the toolpath, give the toolpath a name and save and that toolpath can be then loaded into Mac and run on our CNC machine. Close the save form, swap from the toolpath tab back to the drawing tab, open the two dimensional view you'll see that we have the geometry drawn. We can save the file, so file, save as, give the file a name, and this can be reopened and used at a later date. So just to, just to summarize what we did, we imported our DXF file, we positioned, so if I just select, click again, move the geometry, we click to position this in the center of the material, we then swapped to the toolpath tab on the right hand side, calculated a pocketing toolpath, calculated a profiling toolpath. The toolpaths can be edited by double clicking, so double click and this will open up the form so we can change the settings, change the cutter size etc. We can also add ramp moves if we're cutting hard material so the cutter plunges at a ramp angle or sorry ramp distance into the material. When we're happy with the toolpaths, so we preview the toolpaths, we can select different materials. We can animate the cutter. We can save the, the preview image, so save save this as a JPEG or a bitmap file to email to somebody and finally save the toolpath by selecting the post processor that we wish to use let's say we're going to use the Sureline, Sureline inch save the file and then run the G code on the, on the CNC machine I hope you enjoyed using the software and thank you for taking the time to review Cut2D, thank you